Hello and welcome back to the Villa View for post-match reaction after Aston Villa's 2-0 victory over Norwich City yesterday. To do that, I am joined by Dan. Hello. So, Dan, what did you make of the performance yesterday? To me, it typified what a Steve Bruce performance is. And to me, I expected the performance we saw and I was quite happy. Yeah, we were quite com compact, to be fair. We defended very well. And that's the thing, when we are playing defensively, we don't actually look like we're going to concede. I was, I was never really... Worried, although I thought Norwich had a lot of the ball and they played quite well. I didn't ever really feel like they were going to score because if Chester was ever caught out of position, which is barely ever, Baker was there. If Baker was out of position, then you've got Yedinak covering. The two fullbacks are playing well at the moment and the goalkeeper looks more assured. So I never really felt like we were, we were in trouble and that we were going to, going to concede. I'd, I'd like us to have more of the ball and play a more attacking style, but when you're winning six out of seven games, it's, it's not to be snuffed at. You can have no complaints as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I thought it was at a short performance at times. I thought that at times we had to be careful because Norwich did look okay on the counter especially. And we saw when Cameron Jerome had that one chance, he obviously fluffed his lines, but we saw that they could have created chances, but we seemed to restrict them quite well, especially uh, Jacob Murphy, who was obviously a danger man for them. We kept him quiet. And then obviously Alex Pritchard, who obviously was their best player by some distance yesterday. So we kept those quiet. So I thought we did a great job at that. And Defensively, if you touched on very sound, Sam Johnson looked very reassured, made the right decisions as well, which I thought was important, especially with the one with Cameron Jerome. He could have quite gone down quite easily, quite earlier to try and make a save, but he didn't. He stood firm. Yeah, I'd love to know what the Norwich fan who tried to have a little pop at me in the comments in the preview was going on about. I mean, they've had a lot of the ball yesterday and they haven't scored, so it kind of proves what I was saying about Cameron Jerome. I mean, he went on that, that mazy run, but the guy's got, got no left foot. I mean, I'm not even convinced that that was a corner. To be honest, it looked like he just kicked it out, kicked it out of play, screwed it out of play. But Norwich were one of the sides that you'd have expected to be up there before Christmas. We went, we went there, and we were awful, and we and we lost. So it's good to see that we're now beat, beating the kind of sides, the the more fancied sides in the Championship. Now we beat Sheffield Wednesday, two 0 at home. Norwich two 0 at home. It actually was a very similar game to the Sheffield Wednesday game. But it, but it's nice to see. I mean, we're very reliant on Codger. Is, is one thing at the moment. If if he doesn't score, you struggle to see where the goals are going to come from. It would be nice in the coming weeks if we start to see other players chip in, chip in with goals. But at the moment, we, we haven't needed them to be because Codge has been on such good form. Yeah, Scott Hogan obviously come off injured, which didn't help things. But as Bruce has touched on, that was just genuinely a precautionary measure. So hopefully he will be fit to play next weekend and obviously midweek. But to me, he had a few chances and he looked lively at times and he was creating space and... Obviously, he did set up that first goal with that simple pass to Kodja, who made it 1-0. I must say, it was a fantastic goal all around. The counter-attack from one end of the pitch to the other was fantastic. Well, you say it was a, it was a simple pass, and you, you're kind, kind of right. But we, we saw with the Domi yesterday, he does, does all the hard part, the skills, was get beating his man every time. Then he'd, his, his pass or his cross would, would be awful. He, he played the right pass. He played, it was the right way to pass. It may have been an easy pass because he wasn't really challenged, and there was... There was big space, but players still get that kind of thing wrong, so I don't think that can be overlooked. And it's good to see them linking up with Hogan getting an assist for Kodja because that's something that we said we were struggling with before last time those two were in the team together. They weren't linking up at all, so Hogan getting an assist for Kodja can only be good for us going forward. I thought we looked better when we had two up front, and I think Hogan going off actually affected us. I thought Amavi did well when he came on, but I thought that was a bit of a strange substitution. I think had we not been winning, he'd have probably brought Grealish on and played him off Codger, but because we were winning, I think he wanted to play it a bit safer. And he brought Amavi on, who, who did well, but I think Amavi's going to struggle to get back in the team at left-back, because considering what Neil Taylor had been through in the international break, I thought he was very, very good as well. He didn't let that affect him. He made a very important block and challenge at the, near the end of the game as well, when it was 1-0. Dan, somebody actually called in WM last night and questioned Hurahan's ability and suggested that if he was a Premier, if he was good enough for the Premier League, a Premier League club would have signed him in January, which was an outlandish statement for me. Well, one, he started off the game playing left mid, which I don't think does him any favours because he's not not a wide player. And asking a central midfielder to play out there, they're never going to have the best game because he hasn't got, he hasn't got the pace to play, to play that role. Although he did put one good ball in across that Hogan missed that chance with that nice turn. So he did do he did do that in fairness. To, to call him out is bizarre because we had did we have thirty percent possession was it? So Lansbury wasn't in the game either. Neither you didn't notice either of them because quite simply we didn't really have the ball. They'd have done a lot of stuff off the ball that probably went unnoticed. But we obviously kept the shape pretty well because we were very difficult 
to, to break down. We, we didn't really have the ball enough to say Horahan or Lansbury had a good or a bad game. They just weren't really involved in the game because we, we have 30% possession. The only people I really remember having a lot of the ball were Rodoma, Hutton and Codger, really. I don't remember anyone else really be, being heavily involved going forward, in all fairness. Made a point there about Hutton. To me, again, had another good game. He was the best outlet we had in terms of taking the game to the opposition, so to speak, and he created chances for us again. Yeah, he did. He knocked a good ball through in the uh, in the first half. I can't remember who it was to, possibly Hogan or Codger, are the obvious ones. I, think, I can't remember if he was offside or not, but he played a lovely little outside of the boot pass through. And he had another good game. I can't, I can't knock him because he's playing He's playing really well. He's cut the errors out and he, he's... he's Kind of his positioning's got better. I don't know whether having Brian having some proper competition has been a benefit to him because he seems to be a different player over the last month or so. He did have one moment where he had an absolutely horrendous pass. He had his head in his hands and he, he looked like he was really annoyed with himself. But he had a he had a good game. He was easily in our top three or four players again. In all fairness, I think he was too fair. And then moving further forward, obviously we can't ignore Jonathan Codger. Now three goals off that record of Peter with it. He's he's. Unassailable in comparison to anyone else for me at the moment. And to me, he is one of the best in the league by some distance. The, the, the ability he's got to create chances, whether that's by himself or whether he uses teammates, he's starting to use the team a bit more. He doesn't seem as selfish as he has been previously. I still think there's aspects of his game he could work on. Him. His passing isn't brilliant by any stretch of the imagination. But the way he holds onto the ball and the way he carries the ball, he's, he's dribbling and his footwork, to me, he's, he's Premier League level on that side of things. He's too good for the championship. His feet, he's got his feet are too quick for championship defenders. They can't deal with him. And as I say, the way he carries the ball is a real joy to watch. 15 million now is an absolute bargain. He's at 17 goals in the league now. So he's three away from breaking the 20, 20 barrier. He's been an unbelievable piece of business. If someone wanted to come and get him off us now, we'd be looking for 25 million at, at least, which no one's going to pay. So that's, that's good. That's good news for Villa. We, we bought high. 15 million and it, and it was a high price but it, it's proved worth it and that paying that premium to begin with now I think teams will struggle to take him away from us because we will be asking for silly money and no one's going to pay that. I mean so there was a few comments yesterday people saying he was a bit lazy I, I, I don't buy, buy that at all I don't get I, that's not what I say unless I'm watching a different game I, I don't see that at all he run, absolutely runs his socks off and to be fair yesterday he had to run, had to run his socks off because there wasn't much chance creation going on especially in the second half we were sat pretty deep from the 46 minutes so he was ploughing alone for her for a lot of the game. But he handles it well. And when he gets the chances, he takes it. I mean, his first finish, that's his weaker foot. And he's bent it into the corner superbly. No margin for error there. He's tucked it away. Second goal, he showed good anticipation. And he managed to get his foot on the end of it. I mean, there's no taking away. It was horrific defending. But Villa, have over the years, we don't accept gifts. We're the ones giving gifts out. So to see us starting to accept gifts now is, is good to see. Dan, so we've asked people on the Villa View Twitter to tweet in their thoughts on the game, as well as on Instagram and Facebook and all that jazz. What have people been saying? Rhys Jones, actor, saying, can't help but feel like a typical Villa fan, thinking on another day we'd get beat with stats like that, but a win and better than 2015-16. I disagree with this. I'm sorry, but I do, because I do not believe that possession stats mean anything in football. I know they do on the basis in terms of if you go to a game, it's more attractive if you see a side that's got 70% possession or whatever. But for me, you could have 10% possession and win 1-0. I'd rather see that than have 90% of the possession and lose 1-0. I know which one I'd rather be watching, and I'm sure you'd probably say the same. But I can understand where people be coming from when they look at stats and go, oh, they had this many shots compared to us and this many possession. But to me, it's about how clinical you are. And at the moment, we're being clinical, which is what matters. I know that... Obviously, I get the point, the fact that it doesn't look good on paper. But for me, it doesn't mean nothing, the stats don't. Especially looking back, we had the chances and we took them. The other point would be that is that Di Matteo, under Di Matteo, we had, a, we had a lot of the ball, but we didn't win many football matches. So I know which one I prefer coming home from at the end. Benji Evo has made a, is a quite a good point. He's raised a good question, actually. He says, Yednap played great. Do you think we should invest in another central defensive midfielder? considering we only have one player who can play there. Gareth Barry, that's all I'm saying. Bring him home this summer. I'd like to. I don't know whether it will uh, whether it will happen, but that would be a, a phenomenal signing, and there'd be two that you could rotate. I think they're different kinds of players, though, because Barry's passing is obviously far superior to Yedinax, but Yedinax reading of the game. I mean, yesterday, like I said, if one of the defenders wasn't wasn't where they were supposed to be, 
Yedinak. Yedinak was there and considering the air miles he'd been through in the week as well. He's an unbelievable player for us. He's been such a good signing. So finally, we've got Rob Aston saying a real resilience about the team now, but still riding our luck at times. Gardner looks short of confidence. Amavi Brighty yesterday. Yeah, um, Gardner, I think coming on was important for me. I know Horahan was brought off just because he was on international duty. Don't know why he was took off. And yeah, that wasn't, but that's another story. But I think that, I think speaking about Gardner, confidence will be like at the moment. He's obviously had a tough season at times. He's had a bit of stick, but for me, I think he's still got a future at Villa. And he needs that game time to get back to the confidence that he should be at. He looked quite reassured when he came on the other week, I think. But yes, in particular, he didn't look great. He looks a bit nervy. But I think that that will come back with game time. He'll get back to where he should be. As from Ardy, he did look really bright. I think his future is at left midf- midfield if he wants to stay with Villa. But if we're being honest in the summer, I don't know if he will be a Villa player. Just I just can't see it, to be honest. I think he's done his service now. And I feel like he owed us a year because of what happened in his first season. But I feel like now it might be time that he will move on from Villa to somewhere else. But for me, I think his future will be at left midfield, if anywhere because I think he's quite good going forward. And he was yesterday as well, putting a few different crosses as well. So I, th- I can see both the points that have been made there by Rob. I don't see any way in which Amavi is, is here next season. But I, I'm a little bit... I really like him, but I'm a bit disappointed by him yeah. this season. I mean, I know he didn't really have a pre-season, which has probably playing, played a part, but I just feel like he's got more ability than, he, than he's showing. He's got really good feet, and I feel like he should be beating people more often than he does. He's a good footballer, and I've just been a little bit underwhelmed from him this season but I don't think he'll be here next season he's not going to I think he probably sees himself as a left back and he's not going to usurp Taylor I don't think Taylor's Bruce's boy so I see Taylor keeping his keeping his place and maybe us buying a younger cheaper version of, of Amavi perhaps so we did have fan cams at the game yesterday if you haven't checked them out already please do go and check them out and also the finale to Brian Little's interview with us is out now so make sure you go in and check in that one out. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do drop us that like below and also comment in your thoughts on the game and subscribe to the Villa View if you are new to the channel. If you enjoyed that video, why not watch another one? Click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full. And don't forget to subscribe. Click on our logo there on the left and press subscribe. Easy.